Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today we're going to be learning how to draw an action pose, one that involves foreshortening, that kind of 3D effect you get when the hand is reaching out towards the viewer. Uh, and this lesson is based, to a large degree, on one of the lessons from my new book, Mastering Manga 3. So this video sort of doubles as a, uh, a preview uh, for uh, this book, but actually next Friday is going to be the real day when I show you uh, the full tour, the grand tour of Mastering Manga. Three. For now, though, let me say a word or two about what I've got here. People like to know the size that I'm working at. We've got two squares side by side. Each one of them is four and a half inches on all sides. That works out to around 11 and a half centimeters. And I've drawn a piece of rope here. My idea is to draw my character Brody from Brody's Ghost, leaping forward to grab hold of this rope at the last possible moment in true action hero style. And uh, so what I'm going to begin by doing is drawing the basic guidelines of his hand, the one that's going to be reaching towards us, um, right behind the rope, uh, sort of suggesting that we see this just during those last seconds before he grabs hold of it. All right, so you can see that I start with a real kind of stick figure type of uh, guideline, just to sort of figure out where everything is going to go. The four fingers and the thumb. Uh, the shape here of the palm is kind of a, an unusual one. Notice the sort of 90 degree angle that forms here. And then this curve, which very often uh, is present in someone's hand along the fingers. Uh, and it's rather than a straight line that goes right across, it tends to be uh, more of a curve right there. Um, and then the length of the fingers. Uh, this is not supposed to be a video on how to draw the hand, but it is interesting to note that this tends to be the longest finger. These two a little shorter than the pinky, uh, quite drastically shorter than that. I'm going to go ahead and erase away this line here and uh, the corresponding line down here, since indeed the rope is going to be uh, in front of his hand. <laughs> Wouldn't be good if it was behind his hand. Oh, I missed! Anyway, uh, so what I'm going to do now is carry on and draw... Um, you know what I think I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll draw his head and uh, the, uh, the rest of his arm connecting to his shoulder. So you can see the size of the hand relative the, to the head is uh, rather exaggeratedly large. That's part of this foreshortening effect. The uh, objects that are closer to us uh, get quite large, and then as we go further away, we're shrinking little by little um, various uh, aspects of the body. Um, notice here, uh, the, this is supposed to be the shoulder where the upper arm connects uh, and then comes forward here. Eventually, you're going to see all of this sort of fleshed out a bit, and, and this becomes rather challenging uh, in terms of suggestion the foreshortening there. Uh, notice that the, the shape of the head, the way I've drawn it, is fairly close to real human anatomy, which is to say taller than it is uh, wide. Not always the case in um, different styles of drawing, but it's the case in my style of drawing today. How do you like that? Let's go ahead now and draw the other arm and the sort of clenched fist over here. So, quite dramatic the size of this fist compared to this hand over here. Uh, again, just indicating distance uh, as uh, this arm is so much further away than this one is. Um, right here, the, uh, the forearm is going to be coming almost more or less straight towards the viewer. That's why this distance is so short. And speaking of uh, foreshortening in terms of the forearm, you're going to see that the spine also greatly foreshortened. We almost just leap right down to the pelvis here because he's leaning uh, toward us. I think I can just go ahead and do uh, the pelvis and both of the legs all at once. So again, we have the situation where the four shortened parts end up with short little lines, like especially this lower part of the uh, leg that is pointing away from us. We barely see much of a line there at all. Where's this thigh, which is um, pretty, you know, uh, parallel, I suppose, to the, the plane, the viewing plane, uh, is uh, almost anatomically accurate to what we would expect there. Uh, and um, yeah, all of this very much in a stick figure mode as I'm just figuring out the basics of where I want things to be. Now it is time to uh, start fleshing things out a little bit, and I'll probably try to zoom in just a bit as we begin uh, finalizing the basic guidelines of the body. So you can see how these initial guidelines sort of serve as almost a skeletal structure. 
and uh, I build off of each one of them to make the thumb and the various fingers. And, and uh, what I'm going to do right now is just sort of uh, erase away these initial guidelines uh, as I explain a bit more about um, drawing the hand in this per particular pose, which is I, uh, a fairly common pose, I think, in uh, sort of superhero and action uh, type comics. Uh, definitely worth learning how to draw this sort of uh, extending toward the viewer hand. There's something very uh, dramatic about it. As I said before, the getting the lengths of the various fingers is key, not just to this pose, but to a lot of different uh, hand poses. But then notice how uh, each one of these uh, lines, contour lines of the finger extend past that initial guideline of the um, palm of the hand. And that is a, sort of a, a little detail there that when the hand is reaching towards you, you do in fact see a little bit between the uh, fingers to, to that flesh beyond that curves up uh, to the knuckles. And uh, these little details can actually pay off quite a lot later on. Now, uh, I'm going to curve this a bit more. It's very boxy, uh, of course, so the, the initial guideline there was pretty pretty bare bones, but uh, I think generally that's a principle that, that will serve you well when drawing poses. Don't try to leap into the final details at the beginning, just sort of get the basics. You don't have to do uh, anything <laughs> that I do, actually. You don't have to uh, draw the sort of uh, stick figure style that I do. But uh, generally speaking, most people want to begin with the basics before moving on. Now notice how I've sort of squared off the tips of the fingers. That certainly is not anatomically accurate, but it's something. It's a technique that I've borrowed from uh, a, a lot of superhero comics I see. Uh, sort of squaring off the tips of the fingers, something kind of visually appealing about that, even if it is not 100% accurate anatomically. Uh, now that we've got this in place, though, let's move on to drawing the uh, forearm and the upper arm sort of compressed as they will be into this uh, foreshortened view. Now things start to get a little tricky here, and uh, I'm certainly no expert, but you know normally the forearm is going to be the smaller part of the arm compared uh, to the upper arm. When you're doing this kind of uh, foreshortening effect, it, it kind of flips around and the forearm gets a little larger, the uh, upper arm a little smaller. I'm going to go ahead and erase the uh, structure here that uh, again serves as like a skeleton um, that you're building uh, the rest of this around. Notice this line here that uh, separates the, is it the deltoid up here from the bicep? Uh, actually quite an important line and can be tricky in terms of defining that region where this comes down into the chest. Speaking of which, I think it's time for us to go ahead and get those lines in place right now. All right, so I thought I'd just go ahead and do the other arm, but I'm going to save the details of the hands here for a letter for this one hand because it's um, fairly tricky. And uh, I'll go ahead and once again erase these initial lines. Hopefully, it did help you to have those in place to begin with to get some sense of the, you know, almost the interior of the body. Notice how the rib cage down here, heading towards the waist, very much uh, concealed from view because he's leaning forward so uh, far toward us. And then uh, over here, again, if you compare to the upper arm and the forearm, getting quite small uh, as we suggest uh, distance. Um, indeed, the, at the heart of this whole lesson, this idea of uh, creating a, an effective distance by reducing the size of parts of the body that are further away. Well, I think it's time now to draw. I'll, I'll just go ahead and do all at once the thighs and, uh, you know, the lower legs heading down to the feet. So, as I said before, the lower legs, the, the calves, is that what it, it sounds like I'm talking about? cows. Uh, but the calves are uh, sort of receding uh, from view. In fact, over here it's almost just like a, an oval shape, you know, and uh, from a, you know, when you're lucky and things are going well, these um, foreshortening drawings can allow you to, you know, skate by without drawing certain parts of the body because they're, uh, they're receding so far behind. Like in this case, the uh, upper leg is turned away from us and that I barely even have to draw at all uh, that part of the body. Um, but one part that I am going to have to draw is this uh, clenched fist here. Now again, I don't want to make this so much a video about how to draw hands, 
Um, that's the problem with one of these pose videos is it, it, there's so many different parts of the body you could spend all day focusing on the individual parts. But I am going to try now to uh, get the basic guidelines in place for the uh, thumb and the, the fingers of this clenched fist. So my strategy for drawing a clenched fist is to um, have all four of the fingers kind of become a uniform shape here. And uh, from this point of view, uh, the the fingers of, like the pinky is turned further in. So this line sort of symbolizes the knuckles. Uh, and I'll just sort of dash in here, maybe one, two, three, the uh, different fingers. Hands, notoriously hard to draw. And uh, indeed, I struggle with them myself on a daily basis. But let's move on now to drawing the uh, face, which uh, presents its own challenges, but we can certainly get a head start by drawing, you know, just one or two lines for um, figuring out where the eyes and the, and the sort of center part of the nose and mouth will go. All right, well, we're almost at the end of this um, time-lapsing basic guideline part of the video, ready to get into some real-time drawing. I'll just point out here uh, the placement of this line. This is actually for the sort of upper eyelash. Uh, the actual lines of the eyes will drop in just below this. And uh, you can see the center line. He's turned just a little facing towards uh, the rope so that he might grab it just in the nick of time. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead now and put in the very basic guidelines of the eyes, uh, nose, and the mouth, and then we can knock it off with all this time lapse and get into the real-time drawing. All right, well, there's going to be a lot of um, uh, refining of these facial features later on. Hopefully I can do most of that in real time. And apologies if there's not a whole lot of advice about how to draw the human face. I've got so many other videos that cover that topic. I'll uh, try to link to them in uh, the info box, the description of this video. But for now, I think we can maybe uh, shift focus over to the hand and start to refine the details of um, that very foreshortened, in-your-face, <laughs> uh, wide-open, palmed hand. All right, well, it is time to finally get into the real-time part of this video. We have sent Old Man Time Lapse off to get his cappuccino and a nice big bowl of rice pudding. <laughs> Oddly specific, Mark. <laughs> Getting kind of goofy. I usually wait until later in the video. Now, what I'm doing is uh, uh, starting by putting in the basic uh, definition of the thumb, the end of the thumb. Uh, I've said this in other videos that uh, I think artists tend to take a little artistic license here, defining the thumb rather more than it's actually seen in real life. Uh, but I kind of am going to do the same thing over here uh, with each one of the fingers. Uh, now that I've committed to real time, but we're just going to get a little repetitious here, folks, as I do this four times. Notice where this line goes uh, as this hand reaches out to us. The sort of hand, uh, the line of where the finger joins the hand, uh, it comes well over to the side of that contour line, uh, giving this a little more structure, substance. Brody's hand. Why is he re using only one hand <laughs> as he reaches up? Shouldn't he be using both hands? If his life is at stake, maybe he needs the other hand to uh, sock the bad guys in the jaw as he holds onto this rope for some reason. Uh, I'm not supposed to be able to explain these things. Anyway, you see me dividing each one of the uh, fingers into the uh, four individual parts, phalanges, is that, that always sounds wrong to me, although people say that that is what these should be referred to. And uh, if you like, you can kind of add a bit of definition. Again, I see, I tend to see the um, artists uh, focusing a bit more on the tip of the finger than they do on the other uh, parts there. See, I've got, I've started just calling them parts <laughs> instead of phalanges. Anyway, it's up to you as to whether you want to use this squared off technique. It's something that I've seen other artists use to good effect. And what I might be doing later on is adding a bit of shading. Sometimes I see uh, a bit of sort of like uh, just a touch of shade that emphasizes the end of the fingers there. Again, also helping maybe with that effect of them looking like they're reaching out towards you.
And as for the sort of palm of the hand itself, um, I'm going to get in the sort of base of the thumb that comes in over here, this sort of meaty, fleshy area. <laughs> Meaty. Sounds like it's something I'm going to eat. Today we will be dining on the base of the thumb. Weird? What is what is in your coffee this morning, Mark? You're being very strange. Um, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of shading in here. I don't normally get into the shading part of it, but I just sort of felt, why not? Go ahead and define this uh, hand a little bit more. Now the rope I'm going to hold off until later for... Uh, adding very much detail to that, but just to sort of separate it a bit visually from uh, the rest of his hand. That's how that's going to go. And uh, this is a bit tricky for me, this area of the forearm where the sort of tendons, you know, I feel like there ought to be some suggestion of those. There's not a whole lot of space for it. And indeed, you're kind of getting into perspective almost as it's reaching out towards you. Uh, it certainly is possible to overdo it. Uh, and I, if it's possible, I will overdo it, knowing me. But I'm going to go ahead and add a bit of shading down here as well. And I don't know if this needs to be quite so delineated here. It is, of course, part of the same uh, fleshy area down there. The bicep, if I knew more about... Uh, uh, anatomy, I would be able to draw this in a more decisive way. Sadly, I do not, and I'm kind of fudging it a little bit here. But it seems to me a, a bit of shading down here wouldn't hurt for defining these various parts of the uh, arm. But you can see how important it is to get those basic guidelines in place to begin with. If you don't, if you haven't got those, the the basic structure where it needs to be, there's no way that you can put all this shading in the right spot and so forth. Now, it's probably time for me to get some indications of uh, eyebrows and so forth. It's, uh, this uh, was not intended to be a video about facial expressions. I know I, with videos like this, I, I spent so much time talking about what it's not about. This video is not about this. It's not about that. Um, but I figured some people might want to see me draw the details of the face in real time, even if I don't go into a whole lot of uh, detail about advice. I figure he would be panicked. Will I be able to grip a hold of this rope with one hand? Why am I not using the other hand? What was I thinking? Or maybe it's more like, what am I thinking? It's happening right now. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, Brody's trademark messy hair. Ever since he broke up with his girlfriend, he just hasn't been able to comb his hair. Um, I suppose I can say a thing about, you know, if you're drawing action poses, don't forget to have the uh, hair and clothes uh, react um, to the action. You know, if, if I make his hair all, you know, uh, very carefully brushed and combed and so forth, I'm missing the opportunity to add a feeling of action to this pose. In fact, in uh, Mastering Manga 3... There is a, I, I devote a, a small section to showing how hair uh, and clothing can contribute to a feeling of action. And so I'm just going to go ahead and finish off adding strands to this. I probably will have to do some bring back old man time lapse to <laughs> finish off the details of the hair. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. Quite literally all day. Day, but I'll get I'll get a little indication of the lower teeth here. I was thinking this might be a good idea for a future video: how to draw a mouth, uh, the open mouth, where you see the teeth. Let me know if you would like me to do that. This I've drawn, I've done at least two or three videos uh, focusing on how to draw the mouth, but I none of them really have uh, the mouth open to the degree where you can really see the teeth. So, coming soon: how to draw an open mouth with visible teeth. Hopefully I can come up with a better title than that. Um, now let's go ahead. I'm going to put in an indication of his uh, clothing. This is not related so much to the pose, but it does help in terms of conveying the structure. Very often I'll come in here and draw the, the collarbone. That helps me to sort of understand the structure. Uh, but a, a line here across the center also can help in terms of the of the pecs. You have to draw the pecs, man. Um, 
and getting that structure in place. Clo clothing wrinkles, yet another thing that I cannot spend a whole lot of time talking about in this video, but certainly you're going to get a lot of wrinkles uh, around the waist, and I feel like artists take advantage of that opportunity to just draw a whole bunch of <laughs> roughly horizontal lines that convey the idea of uh, wrinkles in the clothing. Uh, I never did really erase these interior skeletal stickman lines over here, did I? And so over here I'm going to add a little bit of definition to separate the deltoid from the bicep. In fact, I might just go ahead and make this whole area a bit more shaded. I probably should refocus here so you can see the details a little better. Sorry about that. So as I said, hands are uh, notoriously difficult to draw, um, but uh, I always advise look at your own hand, see if you can get it into that position, and that'll help you. Your, uh, your hand can serve as the model. Even so, I think you'll all agree, even with your hand there serving as a model, it can be so hard to get uh, the details right. I find getting the contour of the knuckles in place can be key to drawing a uh, fist like this. And notice that the lines, the individual lines of the fingers don't reach all the way up to the knuckles. So this whole area here, uh, I'm not going to have those lines extend all the way. But I, I have found that this sort of cascading line in which the, the fingers are increasingly um, concealed from view as you go down towards the pinky, that can help. And I need all the help I can get when it comes to drawing hands, trust me. Uh, really brutal. Probably time to do another uh, How to Draw Hands video. Long overdue. You can see the lines getting darker as, <laughs> as I struggle, getting more and more nervous about actually drawing a hand. Maybe I could have him put his hand in his pocket? Or behind his back? Uh, anyway. I'm going to do a little bit of the same thing you saw over here with the tendons, just get a little indication of that. Indicate? I said indication. <laughs> Long-standing tradition. <laughs> All these years later, still saying indicate and indication. In and indicatory. And now we come down to drawing the um, thighs and the feet. Um, happily, there's not a whole lot of detail to be drawn here. I always like to get a seam along the leg of the pants, as you see in like blue jeans and stuff. For me, it helps uh, convey the idea of cloth. And maybe even get a sense of shade. See how I'm drawing a circle here? I'm going to add a bit of shading here. This can help for giving us the sense of the the form of the thigh, whether it works in terms of actual lighting or not. Sometimes you can sort of break these rules uh, and just make use of uh, a bit of shadow like that to help sell the idea of the, the form of his uh, thigh. I think what I'll do with this other one is just put the whole leg in shadow. Maybe his body is casting a shadow. His chest, you know over the rest of his leg. But that could also help in terms of um, making that leg fall away. Just the contrast between the more brightly lit hand and this distant leg. That's my excuse. It helps with the effect of the foreshortening. Um, drawing feet, again, yet another thing that uh, I could have devoted the whole video to. Um, happily in this uh, pose, you're not having to draw too much in the form of details. I do feel like I want to get like some indication of the ankle down here. And this is the sort of upper calf, the calfiel region. <laughs> calfiel. If that is not in the dictionary, we better get it in there. The calfiel region. And I always like to get some sort of an indication of the sort of front part of the boot. I find that that helps in conveying the sense of uh, the foot there. Just sometimes it, it just looks a little too blank to me, you know. And there we go, we're getting towards the end of things here. Like I said, I, I'm probably just going to do a lot of the hair 
in time lapse and certainly the details of the rope and so forth. Hopefully you found this real time part of the video helpful uh, that uh, I, I said something useful, <laughs> even if only by accident during the course of this rambling midsection of the video. Now I think it's time for me to pull out my trusty black Prismacolor and uh, do the final line work and then we'll be back with a few final words. Well, that brings us to the end of this video. I thought I'd point out one last thing that I was doing here, putting in extra dark lines, maybe almost going a little too far <laughs> to make a point, but when you put in the dark lines, it makes the, this part of the drawing appear a lot closer uh, to the viewer than, say, back here where I really minimized uh, the use of dark lines. Not something you have to do, just uh, an option, something that's in your toolbox that you might choose to do. Uh, as part of your uh, effect uh, at making something look a little more 3D. But you know, this drawing can't be done until we add the action-adventure blushies. Why would he have blushies in this situation? Maybe he's embarrassed by his own stupidity. Why am I using just one hand? <laughs> Wouldn't I increase my chances of survival if I used both hands? <laughs> anyway, hang on a second, I'm gonna grab my books so that I can thank everyone who has supported me by getting them. Like Brody's Ghost, that's the guy that I was drawing today. If you're curious about him, his story is told in this collected edition. And the drawing lesson, my graphic novel that teaches people how to draw. And of course, Mastering Manga 3, my very latest book. Next Friday, I will be doing the grand tour of this book, showing you all its various features, indeed showing you what makes it different from Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2. But for now, let me go ahead and lay down this pencil. I want to thank you all for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful, and I'll be back with another one real soon.